Now I'm going to make a demonstration and do a demonstration of a, a very simple chicken noodle and stir fry type dish um, with sweet chilli. Now, I generally um, try to cook everything from scratch, but on this occasion I'm going to cheat. I normally don't cheat, but being honest, there virtually isn't a professional kitchen, restaurant kitchen that I know of that doesn't use this stuff. This is sweet chilli sauce. And sweet chilli sauce is very readily available in the supermarkets and it's a very very good product. It is mainly chilli, sugar and vinegar. Um, a few other bits and pieces in it but that's generally the main ingredients. And by the time we would make that sauce in a kitchen and the cost that it would cost us to make it, it's far easier just to buy it. Um, it's a really really good versatile product and there is 90% of the kitchens that I've ever been in, definitely use this stuff in bulk. That is sweet chilli sauce, can be bought very simply in the, um, in the supermarkets. Now, we're going to start off with our chicken first of all, and we're going to make a very, very simple marinade for our chicken, which will help to start infusing, um, help to start infusing flavour into the, into the chicken. So, we'll start off first of all with our chicken fillets. Chicken fillets is the breast meat of the chicken from here. It is the most tender and the least amount of fat in the meat. So we start off with our fillets on our red board. The reason we need a red top board is to, and kill, uh, to stop and avoid any cross contamination um, from the chickens. Um, to any other meat. Chicken are very full of salmonella and campylobacter so therefore we need to be very careful hence that's why we use our red chopping board. Back with the chicken fillets then. Um, these are already pre-butchered pre from whole chickens and we're going to first of all butterfly these. So if you ever see a dish where you need to butterfly the chicken I'm going to show you that. We're going to butter the, butterfly these and then we're going to progressively strip them down further into goujons. I'm just going to remove any little bits of fat and sinew from the outside. Then placing the chicken fillet flat on the chopping board, I take my hand like that, which is flat, putting it down on the top, and then use my knife, ensuring that I use a sharp knife, and I make a cut straight across the centre. Ideally your knife wants to be very sharp. Then we open up the chicken like so, to reveal a heart or a butterfly shape. And effectively, we cut three quarters of the way through and then we open it out like so. So we take it a knife and we come straight through like so, three quarters of the way, and then open that out. We'll do that with the other second one. So again, my hand is flat, three quarters of the way through, and then open it out. Now, I now want to cut these into nice little manageable strips. And I just cut straight down to give little goujon style strips of chicken. Okay, so I've now been away and I've washed my hands and I've got rid of my red chopping board um, and I've washed my knives and anything else that I'm using. Again, the reason for this is raw chicken is, one, is a very, very big factor when it comes to food poisoning. Um, again, it's very high in salmonella, very high in campylobacter and other, other sort of uh, not very nice bacteria. So, if you look, I've got myself a little bit of uh, blue tissue. Put, I, I dump on that down, I wet it, and then I put that under my chopping board, and it stops it slipping. And then a nice sharp knife. So, I want to get the marinade ready, and this marinade is very simple. It is a three stage marinade. Here I have some root ginger. To prepare the root ginger, we quite simply take a paring knife or a vegetable knife and we trim away the outside of the root ginger and again as the name implies it is a root vegetable it is a root and it's very very strong in flavour and very very popular in Asian cuisine that's the ginger peel my next step then is garlic okay so this is a whole clove, a whole bulb of garlic and each individual um, element of the garlic is known as a clove so I want probably about I say three nice cloves of garlic for this, so just pop my knife in the side, give it a little twist, and those cloves will come out. 
There's one there, that, that there's the outer skin, which we don't need. So there's one clove, two cloves, and just pull the remaining clove out. Three cloves of garlic. So to peel garlic, it's actually really quite simple. We take our knife, the back of our knife, and we crush it down till we hear crunch. And we do that with the three. One, two, three. And we remove the outer layer of skin. So, first thing I'm going to do for the marinade is I'm going to uh, grate down this, this ginger. And I'm using the very finest edge of the grater to get this ginger as fine as I possibly can. Now, it can be quite fibrous. Once you get to the point of fibrous, you can leave that to the side. And quite a lot of it gets stuck in behind the grater. So if you just use it, pull that out with the knife. And then we have that nice, nice ginger there that has been grated. So again, that goes in with my chicken. We just pop that on the top. So for this bit then, I'm now going to puree some garlic on my chopping board. The garlic can be pureed in a, in a blender, in a food processor. But I start off by cutting it, just rubbing it and scraping it the whole way down. And you just take your time and do that little bit at a time. And what you'll end up with is this really fine layer of garlic. Now in our bowl we have our chicken, we have our garlic and we have our ginger and we're going to follow this up with a marinade of light soy sauce. Now we have three different types of soy. We have dark soy, we have light soy and we have sweet soy. A word of warning, Dark soy is quite, uh, soy sauce isn't expensive, but um, if you use dark soy sauce, it is extremely salty and it can destroy your food. So if you're using dark soy sauce, be very careful. Sweet soy sauce is lovely, it's a lovely product. Um, it's quite difficult to get actually, but when you're cooking or marinating, I would recommend you use light soy because it, um, it's definitely not as salty. And if, you know, you run, you're running less of a risk of ruining your food. So, as you say, a nice big amount of soy sauce. A nice big amount of soy sauce. And I'm mixing that through. So we're trying to embed the garlic and the ginger the whole way through. Now, as with any marinade, the longer we leave that marinade, the more that will infuse into the chicken. And chicken tends to be a firm favourite of food companies because it is the perfect vessel to absorb and pull in any other food and any other flavours. So a lot of food companies like using and making chicken dishes because it's quite mild in flavour and as I say it pulls in and absorbs flavours of other products, quite often cheaper products and then is able to make more money from them. So we stick that in the fridge, preferably overnight but you want to leave it for sort of at least two hours anyway. As part of our chicken stir fry dish that we're, that we're um, going to do, I'm now going to cook the noodles. Now, if you were in a kitchen with me and I was training you as a chef, I would, I would train you to make your own fresh pasta and fresh noodles. But that's obviously not applicable to everybody at home who would need the machinery and the skill set to do it. Um, although fresh pasta and noodles are quite simple. Um, you know, quite often when we're buying the dried product, it's every bit as good as, as fresh stuff and it's a lot labour intensive. So, these are egg noodles from the shops and they're quite simply, they are a dried product. Um, and they're good, they're good for what they are, but they're actually quite bland as well. Um, so, again, this gives us the perfect opportunity to incorporate more flavour into them. What I like to do with noodles or any pasta, dried pastas, I like to cook it with stock. Now, when I say the word cook, if you look here, all I simply have is a bowl of boiling water straight out of the kettle. Straight out of the kettle. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drop my noodles in. Into the boiling water. And the reason why 
and not cooking these is because pasta and dried noodles cook very quickly and they don't need an, an awful lot of residual heat or, or hard sort of direct heat from a cooker top. Boiling water is simply enough. Now again I'm back to my old favourite Oxo cubes. I love Oxo cubes. They're a very very good product and they're full of flavour and they're good for seasoning and they're good for bringing out the flavour of food. So in this case I'm using chicken Oxo cubes. We're making a chicken dish so we may as well marry it up with um, a, a chicken cube to enhance that sort of flavour. Now what I'm going to do, again these are very very good because they're compacted together but they're a powder rather than a pellet as you would get in, in other brands of stock cubes. So when we crumble them in they dissolve very very easily. So for that amount of water and that amount of noodles I'm happy to go with about three stock cubes. Now again one cube will make about a litre of, of liquid stock. I probably have about a litre and a half in there. I'm more than happy to double that up. They like lots of flavour. The only thing we need to be careful of is we don't over salt. And there is a high salt co salt content in Oxo cubes. But again, how do we know? We taste. We taste all the time till we get it. And remember, the golden rule is you can put it in, but you can't take it out. So you can poison food simple. So that's three cubes in there. I give them a quick stir around. Giving them a quick stir around. And again you can see the colour of that liquid. And that's chicken flavour. That's chicken flavour in there. And the good thing is, rather than it just being plain old water, bland water, we may as well infuse more flavour into it. Now, they will take approximately 10 minutes just sitting, resting in that water. And that's all they need until they're really soft but a tiny little bite left in the, in the, in the noodle. We don't want them going soggy, we don't want to overcook them, and we don't want them being basically uh, turning into mush and being overcooked and, and really quite nasty. We want a little tiny bit of bite left in them before we go to the next stage. Okay, so for the next stage of this dish, um, we need our vegetables. Now, in this day and age with the supermarkets, it's very handy to buy pre-prepared veg. It is slightly more expensive and you don't get just as much of it. But in terms of ease of filming for this process, we have used a pre-prepared um, stir-fry mix that I bought from the supermarket. Now, in this particular mix, again, you can use whatever you want. There's no right or wrong answer. But for this particular mix, we have carrot, we have red onion, we have cabbage, raw cabbage and we have um, button mushrooms that are chopped through that. Again, yes we want the vegetable content for health, but we also want it for a crunch factor. And a lot of people go wrong is they overcook their veg until they're mush. We've now done the three different stages. So we've marinated our chicken in our soy sauce, ginger and garlic. We have, um, we have well in this case, pre-prepared uh, stir fry veg that you can get from the supermarket. But if you wanted, you could use sliced onions, sliced pepper, mushrooms, cabbage, carrot, uh, some bean sprouts there if you want. Word of warning for bean sprouts, they do include a toxin. So if you decide to use them, um, give them a little quick rinse in boiling water first. Kills any toxins on them. Um, and then finally then we have our noodles. Now our noodles are still uh, sitting away now, probably about 10 minutes or so in our broth. Um, our, our broth is quite simply uh, chicken stock. Now if we wanted, we could have went one step further, we could have added some spice to that broth, uh, maybe some paprika, maybe some curry powder, um, some cayenne pepper, some turmeric, uh, cinnamon. Um, th the word is your oyster, whatever you want, there's no right or wrong answer. Take a recipe, use it as a guide, don't use it as an absolute template. If you look then over here to my right, um, I have a pan on there, as I've discussed in previous videos, we always cook in a hot pan. So a little bit of oil into the pan and I'm ensure that the oil coats the entire pan. Now you see there's a little bit of smoke coming off so it is very warm um, and then we want to go in with our, our chicken. So again oil and liquid, oil and water don't mix so I just want to put that in nice and gentle. Because our pan is so warm, that chicken is actually on the underside of it, it's actually 
really well, something that's just there already. You see the nice dark colour that's from the soy sauce. And already, because the pan was so hot, and the chicken was so thin, that's already starting to cook through. So, all I'm simply doing is turning that over once. We're now cooking this on a really, really high heat. What is happening is the water content is evaporating away and we're being left with a residue in the bottom of the pan. That residue in the bottom of the pan is absolutely full of flavour. And if you look now, it's getting really, really thick and it's coating that chicken full of flavour. While I'm cooking that, I can smell the ginger, I can smell the garlic and I can smell the soy. Now, the good thing about this is because I started the pan off at such a high heat, this chicken has only been in two or three minutes, and because it's not really fat or really thick, it's only thin, it's going to cook reasonably quickly. If you look at the colour in the bottom of that, that is pure flavour, pure colour. Now I want to go in with my stir fry veg. We're allowing this to cook through and cook through. We're moving it about all the time. This has probably been cooking in the bottom now for probably five to seven minutes. And that chicken, to be honest, is probably cooked by now. If you're unsure, take a piece out, cut it open and make sure there's no paint on the inside. Um, I'm fairly happy that that is all cooked now. Now because of the type of stir fry mix that is, there is cabbage in there and there is raw carrot in there. And they're quite hard and quite firm so there will be a, a good element of bite. What I want to do now is think about my noodles. So, I quite simply want to drain this stock off. Now, these noodles are perfectly good for use tomorrow or the day after. Um, people quite often think that um, you have to use them straight away. If you cool these down very, very quickly and add to them a little tiny smidge of oil, like about a teaspoon fill, that will actually help lubricate up the noodles. That will stop them sticking together and they're perfectly capable of being used the following day. Now, I'm happy that they're well infused with flavour. So I'm going to add in a few portions worth. And what we're thinking about now is effectively reheating these noodles. They have been sitting at ambient temperature um, with relation to the stock that they were in. They're not used and hot, but they're not cold. And again, it's a matter of trying to incorporate the noodles with all of the veg and all of the chicken and mix it all through inside the pan. Now I'm coming to the sort of final stages of this. Um, I want to add in one last ingredient that I discussed at the start. And again, it's sweet chilli sauce. It really is a wonderful product. It's, you can get it in every supermarket, every Asian supermarket, every shop. And it's really good. And even like two good teaspoonfuls into that is a really great accompaniment for it. We do have an awful lot of natural flavour. If we add a lot of that, we're going to make it sweet chilli flavour. But if we just add a little bit in, it just gives an accompaniment that matches the soy and the ginger and the few bits and pieces of spice. I'm actually having a little bit of difficulty here incorporating the noodles with the chicken because it's sort of clumping together. A good way around that is to fuse a pair of tongs like this actually lifting the noodle dish up and mixing it through that way. Overall I'm now happy. That's well heated through. The chicken's well cooked. 
the vegetables are cooking. And again, we don't want soft, soggy vegetables. We want a, we want a vegetable that has a little tiny bit of bite left in the centre of it. Okay, so I'm happy with that now. Um, I'm happy that these noodles are they're nice and warm. And again, a good serving, a good serving idea for these is actually to use tongs. It makes life a wee bit easier because sometimes, as you can see, noodles can be very stringy and very hard to work with. So if you have a nice good pair of tongs, and again, pick them through, making sure you get a nice mixture of all of our different foods in there. Give it a nice wee wipe on the edge just to tidy it up. And we have a nice tasty wee chicken dish 